ever heard of vector embeddings and didn't quite understand what it means and how it works for a generative AI application, then you are in the right place. Hi, my name is Amit Gupta and on this channel, I explain complex technical topics in a simple and fun way for everyone. Today, we are going to talk about vector embeddings and how are they used for building generative AI applications. This video is actually a part of full course on generative AI and LangChain, specially designed for the JavaScript developers. If you are interested, I will add the link to the full course in the description section. You can check it out there. And if you enjoy this video, then please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel for more content on the technical topics. All right, so let's get started with vector embeddings. Vectorization is a technique to convert an object into a numerical representation based on its semantic meaning. Let's talk a bit about the highlighted words. The object can be any form of data, for example, text, image, or even audio or video. It's much easier to compare two numbers rather than comparing two pieces of text, images, audio, or video. So the idea here is to first convert these objects into numbers. Once we have the numerical representation of these objects, then we can compare them and identify if they are related to each other or not. The way the objects are converted to numbers is based on their semantic meaning. That means it's based on their actual real life meaning rather than just how it is spelled or phrased in a particular language. Let's understand this with an example. Here we have a floor map of a house. And we have some objects that we want to place on this map based on where they belong in this house. We will put the bed in the bedroom. Apple goes into kitchen. Alarm clock belongs to the bedroom. Orange will go in the kitchen. And we will place pizza somewhere between dining and the kitchen. Now we can convert this map into a coordinate system with X and Y axes. With this, now we can assign coordinates to these objects based on their position on the X and Y axes. So practically, we have assigned a numerical representation to these objects based on their relevance in a house. And we can save these objects along with their numerical representation in a database table. The numerical representation is called a vector or vector embedding. Now, let's say we need to find all the food items from this database table. If we do a regular text search on this database table, then we will not get any result because there is no item called food in this table. Even there is nothing even close to the word food here. But we know that there are items in this table that are related to food. Now, how about if we bring the floor map again and place the word food on this map? Food would belong to close to kitchen and the dining area. Then let's figure out the coordinates for the word food now, based on its coordinates, we can find other items that are in the close proximity to food. This will return pizza, apple, and orange. This technique is called proximity search. This is exactly how vectorization works. In this example, we used a floor map to position items into a coordinate system. For generative AI, we have special LLMs that are trained to build a very large coordinate system based on the semantic meaning of words or sentences or even images. These LLMs are called embeddings LLM. You can think of these embedding LLMs similar to our floor map that has a coordinate system and it can place items in that coordinate system based on their meaning relevant to that particular map. These LLMs can take text, audio, or images as input and place them in their large coordinate system and then generate their coordinates. 
Similar to our house floor example, these coordinates are the vector representation for these objects and can help identify related items. In our house floor example, we had just two dimensions. We had X and Y, but these large L lamps have a large coordinate system commonly with 1536 dimensions. This is huge. As human, we can't imagine beyond three dimensional world we live in, but this is the power of these embedding LLMs that they have a very large coordinate systems of more than 1500 dimensions. In a RAG system, we store these objects and their vector representation in a database called vector store. These vector stores have special type of index that indexes these items based on their vector representations. This index is called vector index. Most of the commonly used databases that probably you're already familiar with support vector indexes like Postgres, Cassandra, Elasticsearch, OpenSearch. Also, there are some databases that are specifically designed for storing vector embeddings like Pinecon and Chroma. I hope now you have a good understanding of vectors and embeddings. Now let's switch back to the retrieval process and we will add embedding LLM and vector databases to the process. Now we have the chunks as input to the vectorization process. From here, vectorization will send these chunks to the embedding LLM and generate vector embeddings. It will then store these chunks and their vector embeddings into a vector index. Then on the retriever side, retriever will send the question to the embedding LLMs to generate a vector embedding for the question itself. Once it has the vector embedding of the question, it can then search for relevant chunks from the vector index. And the vector index have capability to then return back relevant chunks based on their proximity to the question itself. Now this completes the retrieval step of the RAG architecture. In the next lesson, we will put everything together and complete the RAG architecture. Great, I hope now you have a clearer understanding of vector embeddings and how are they used in the RAG architecture. If you want to dive deeper, then you can check out the full course on generative AI and LangChain. This course covers everything from the basics to the advanced topics to build generative AI applications powered by the LLM. I will put the link to the course in the description or you can scan this barcode to go to this course. This is my first YouTube video and I would really love to hear your feedback. So please let me know in the comment section how you like this video or if you have any questions. And if you would like me to cover any other topics in the future videos, please let me know in the comment section as well. Now don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more technical content. Thank you for watching this video and I really look forward to see you in the next one.